My name is Cindy Perry and I am the Marine Animal Rescue Program Coordinator. I've been working with the rescue program for a little over five years. We are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If there is an animal suffering and there's something we can do to help out that animal, that's number one. In addition to that, each animal that comes in serves as kind of a snapshot as to what's going on out in the marine environment. And it teaches us a little more each time about the concerns and about some of the problems we face. And it may give us a better insight into how to treat those problems and what to do in the future. One of the first things that we do when an animal is admitted into our hospital facility here at the aquarium is a first assessment and physical exam. Math actually comes up on a daily basis in animal caretaking, and some of the ways we use math every day is for things like taking weights and measurements of the animals while they're in rehabilitation to track their growth. Also, figuring out their diets. We not only weigh out the food every day, but we also calculate the number of calories that amount of food means to that animal. We also use calculations to figure out the proper dosages of medicine and vitamins that we give to the animal to help treat whatever is wrong with them. It's very important for us to be accurate because the medication is dosed out according to the weight of the animal. So there's a proportional relationship between how big the animal is, how much it weighs, and what the right dose of medicine is. And even after we release them, we actually try and do what we call post-release monitoring, which uses satellite tag technology. And again, uses a whole slew of calculations to take latitude and longitude from a satellite signal. And we take those numbers and calculate them and determine where the animal is. And it actually lets us track where the animal's going, which helps us to determine how successful we are uh, when we release an animal. Without those numbers and without being accurate, um, we can actually mess up what we're trying to do with animals. We take length and width measurements, um, much like you would be measured if you were getting tailored clothes made. We can help determine even their age by the measurements. So for example, when we get a sea turtle into rehabilitation, we do a series of measurements and those measurements include the length and width of the shell, it's called the carapace, the length of their fins or their flippers the length and width of their head, and we will do that periodically. And again, comparing those numbers, we can actually look at the growth rate of the animals over time and make sure that it's fitting what we would expect. One foot, 3.4 measurements from tip to tip. All seven species of sea turtles are either listed as threatened or endangered at this point in time, meaning all of their populations are in trouble to some point. The Kemp's Ridley in particular is thought of as the most endangered, meaning their numbers are quite low. For Kemp's Ridley, back in the 40s, it was estimated that tens of thousands of sea turtles would come up on the beach on any particular day during nesting season and lay their eggs. And over time, those numbers decreased quite dramatically to less than about a thousand sea turtles coming up by calculating the number of animals that come up each year and looking at those numbers and calculating a trend. It helps to provide the information that's needed to get protection. As a result, that beach that the sea turtles use for nesting is actually now protected. We've been able to institute changes in the types of fishing gear that's out there. And in recent years, the Kemp's release sea turtle numbers have started to rise just a little bit, which is incredibly positive. On August 24th of 2005, we actually had one of the perks of this job, which was the chance to release two animals that had come through the Marine Animal Rescue Program. Um, in this case, it was two Kemp's Ridley sea turtles. Sea turtles will migrate north up the coast and they follow just a very small slip of the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream as it makes its way up the coast. And there is a phenomenon with sea turtles called cold stunning, which basically means their body temperature drops dramatically. 
the sea turtle is dependent on the environment or the ambient temperature for its own internal temperature. And if the case of cold stunning is caught early enough, you can very slowly raise their body temperature by a gradual series of water changes. But you have to be very careful because you certainly don't want to shock it with very warm water. And hopefully over time, you can actually bring that turtle back and they can recover from this. And that's the story between the two animals that we released in August. In addition to being cold stunned, both of these animals also suffered from boat strike injuries. A lot of people think of that shell as just extra hard protection, but it is living tissue. If you crack through it, you do very severe damage in some cases. The lungs of the sea turtles lie right beneath that shell, and if you go very deep, you can actually get into their lung tissue. In addition to that, their spine and their ribs are actually fused to the inner surface of that shell. So as you can imagine, a propeller wound can do quite a bit of damage. We were lucky, the animals were ready to go during the summertime, which meant the waters off of our own shore in Maryland were warm enough and were likely to have other turtles around um, and were likely to have a good food source for these animals. We have specific transport containers that we actually will line with foam to help keep the animals comfortable during the trip down to the release site. We do things like keep them moist, meaning we spray them with salt water on the way down. And then when we arrive at the shore, we take them on a boat. After a nine mile ride out off the shore, we release them off the coast of Assateague Island, which is right next to Ocean City, Maryland. And you just very gently actually ease them back down into the water um, and you watch them as, as long as they're around the area before you take off to get a little sense of how they're doing. Whenever possible, when we're releasing a marine animal from the rescue program, we attach what's called a satellite tag, which allows us to do post-release monitoring. It doesn't hurt the animal and it doesn't impede any of its natural behaviors once it's released, but it gives us information that is quite critical in us determining whether that release was successful. For sea turtles in particular, it can be attached to the carapace or that back shell. And what happens is that tag acts as a transmitter. And when the animal comes up to the surface to breathe and the tag hits the air, it sends off a signal, which is then picked up by a satellite that's traveling in the Earth's atmosphere. We use the data that we collect from the satellite tag to map out the travels of these animals. Whenever we can, we actually put that on our website here at the aquarium, and you can actually call up a map, and you can follow the track of the animal. We try our best to determine whether each release is successful or not. Releasing an animal from the Marine Animal Rescue Program is definitely one of the highlights of this job. When you release an animal, you know, A, that you were successful in treating that animal and fixing, hopefully, whatever was wrong with it, and B, that you're adding something back to the wild population.